Charles Wilhelm has become known as one of the country's top trainers for both horses and people. His approach to training focuses on educating the horse owner alongside their equine partners so they can form a strong bond and achieve an amazing partnership. Located in Castro Valley, California, Charles practices and teaches his ultimate foundation horsemanship that combines the best of traditional, classic, and natural horsemanship into a package that's perfect for every riding discipline. His extensive background of over 35 years of training includes dressage, working cow horse, reining, western pleasure, and trail class. He's one of the few clinicians of our time who's known for his superb skills in communicating and motivating people, as well as his outstanding natural abilities with the horse. He believes that it's never ever the horse's fault, and his training methods reflect that belief. Welcome to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome to the show. You know, we've uh, the industry has been full of uh, gated horses lately, and a lot more people are getting into gated horses. And <coughs> for you people that don't know Larry, Larry is a gated horse trainer out of Kentucky, uh, Cooksville, right? Cookville, Tennessee. Cookville, Tennessee. And uh, we've been friends probably about eight, nine, ten yep. years, and we chatted along the way, and we found out that we have a lot in common. We found out that we we like doing our groundwork. Uh, and we both have a classical background. Probably a little bit more that gets into trouble more than anything else, or at least for me. But a really appreciation for the principles of, uh, of dressage. And Larry, uh, I want you, you know, you talked about foundation for the gated horse. Can you be a little bit more specific about that? Well, um, in the gated horse world, People have a tendency to try to get their horse to gate as soon as he's broke enough to ride. They don't put a foundation on it. They don't teach the horse how to turn left, how to turn right, how to use himself, how to be in balance. Uh, and they all talk about teaching collection to get them to gate, but none of them ever develop the muscles that the horse needs to be in yeah. collection. They actually teach antagonistic muscles for collection. Yeah, so I then, can see then that. Then we yeah. have inverted horses. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we both had the same idea as doing gymnastic exercises. Yep. Uh, I remember I being on the East Coast about 10 years ago. I did gymnastic for the gated horses, you know, and people didn't know what that was. You know what I mean? Uh, and gymnastic exercise is just developing the body ba uh, to balance, control itself better? Or? Because true collection is about a posture that's balanced and that creates relaxation. So true collection creates relaxation. So if the horse isn't relaxed, it's not true collection. Uh, and collection or impulsion will make a gated horse gate. The, here's the thing about gate. You know, we all talk about we want to do the best thing for our horse. Yes, sir. I don't think there's one gated horse that's going to lose sleep at night if he doesn't gate on a trail ride or gate in a show. Yeah, gate, he doesn't care. Gate is something we want him to do. So if we use muscle and force to get gait, then we are not working for the horse. Yeah. We should put him in balance and allow gait to happen. Well, you know, one of the things that I've seen over the years traveling, uh, you know, like yourself, a lot of horse expos from the East Coast to the West Coast, I've seen a lot of gated horse trainers, they're right into a pelman bed or a long shank, you know, and, and I never seen them and I'm not against leverage bit, but I've never seen a gated horse trainer work in a snaffle other than you. Well, it's because most gated horses are taught to gait before they are physically and emotionally ready to gait. I see. So if, you, if you're going to drive a horse into two hands with two legs to get him to gait, he's going to run through your hands because there's no shock absorption to your hands. So you have to have a big shank to hold him back while you drive him into yeah. a wall of hands. If you <laughs> teach a horse balance and suppleness and lightness, he can gait in a halter. Well, you know, Larry, I mean, uh, I don't know how far from the truth, mm. but it sounds like just any other horse here at the ranch. When we have a rain cow horse, we kind of do the same thing. 
we don't start teaching them roll backs and spin, you know, right out of the gate. They they have to learn to go forward and steering and yeah. learn to accept the bit, you know. And you know, I have people at my clinics all the time tell me they they don't have a gated horse trainer near. It, you don't, you know, we, it'd be good to have a gated horse trainer if he puts on a good foundation. But any trainer that puts on a good foundation, it doesn't matter what they train. Yes, it, sir. It's going to work. Well, I've seen that here at the ranch. We do get a lot of gated horses in because gated horse, like any other horse, they have problems. And uh, the thing that we always focus on is forwardness. Can we stop them? And can we get them quiet emotionally? You know, then we have a horse that we can work with. That's foundation. And then once we once we get that, then it seems like the uh, the gait that they have is improved immensely. Is that kind of goes along with your program? Yeah, their genes tell them to gait. I don't have to teach them to gait. I have to teach them all the things they need to know. And gait is a byproduct of good training. Well, for example, this yellow horse. Uh, you know, I worked with this yellow horse here. Uh, it's a Tennessee Walker before a little bit and you saw me uh, work with it and um, when we started out it was either pacing or cantering and running through your hands and running through my hands on a lunge line but at the end uh, it was gating yeah. even on the line or we're starting to we're starting to get the picture because it was learning to be balanced learning to shift so the it, energy back to the hind quarter so if you continued to do that for 30 days this horse would gate beautifully yeah well, let's, let's go ahead and once you work with, Jamie is uh, right. uh, here at the ranch. She works with a program here, Sunrise, and uh, she's trying to learn a little bit of everything to help the program out. So once you work with her a little bit. All right, Jamie, just ask him to gate a circle or move out. I don't care if he's gating or not gating. I just want to see what he does, how he carries himself. We'll be right back with more of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome back to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. All right, Jamie, just ask that horse to move out for a circle and let's look at him and see what he, what he knows and what he's been taught to date. So as he goes around, you can see that he wants to invert himself. He, he now, paces. when you mean invert, meaning he throws his head yeah, up he and hollows out in the it's, back? It's very common in the gated world for people to say you have to ventroflex a horse to get him to oh, gate, okay. which yeah. is another polite term for inverted. Yes. But see, he's dropped his withers. He's yeah. very, look how far out behind himself he works. Yes. Yeah. Well, we his call that are, strung out. Yeah, he's very strung out. He's... Uh, even in the quarter horse world, you know, that would be an acceptable. So we're told in the gated world a lot, get their neck up, drive them into the hands. But the problem is this horse has been taught to gate that way. So he runs through the hands. He looks very tense in his neck. He, he doesn't, he has no flexion at all in his back. As a result, his hocks are way out behind him. And Jamie, just walk, go here and turn in front of the camera. And when she turns in front of the camera and goes, as she turns, turn a couple times. Look at his hocks, especially his right hock. You want the camera on the right yep. hock? Notice how his hocks turn out. He twists his hocks, turning. Yep, see how he twists his hocks? This is a result of him being taught to gait in a compressed posture. So you're, what you're saying, you're, you're compressing him, forcing him into a frame that he's not ready to take or and, even need. And uh, in the gated world, they often think of this as collection, which yeah. they think they need to get the horse to gate. Yeah. So the, as a result, he doesn't flex in his lumbar sacral, okay. in his back. If the horse okay, doesn't- is that, is that just there by the upper uh, let, green stop pad Stop and there? let me show you. So, Go on the other side. And this thing. is true of every horse, not just gated horses. But he doesn't flex in his lumbar sacral, so therefore he also doesn't flex in his stifling hock. So all of his hind end joints remain rigid. So uh, what we talked about in the interview, if you create impulsion from the hind end, that's what creates gait. They're genetically bred to gait. 
So what happens when you invert a horse and teach him to gait this way, all, all of his muscles that he would use to move joints, like my elbow, I have a muscle that bends it this way and a muscle that bends it this way. So none of his muscles that move joints work. They're all yeah, yeah. very tense. Yeah. And all of his muscles of posture become very tense so, because his, his skeleton no longer supports him. <laughs> so he, he has to use all these muscles to support his balance because, and now they can't create locomotion and beautiful movement mm -hmm. or impulsions. So then we have to get this horse, he gates, when he gates, mostly he paces, he gates from speed. In other words, you can't make him gate slow. He has to go faster to be able to gate. So his impulsion, which is not real impulsion, comes from speed, not because a horse that can gate very slow has true impulsion. So if he can't gate very slow, he really doesn't Absolutely. have very imp true impulsion. Well, what are some exercises that we could do that you, you could show us uh, that kind of help that a little bit? Um, a, a lot of things that I would do, all the things that every horseman does, I would teach him to turn on the forehand turn on the haunches, because if he turns on the forehand, it's gymnastic for the hind legs. Cre it creates a bigger range of motion. When he turns on the haunches, I create more range of motion in the front legs and it gymnasizes them. More than that though, we don't want to teach movement just for movement's sake. If you teach this horse to turn on the forehand, he is going to learn, because if you asked him to take his haunches that way, this calf would come on, correct? So he would have to take this hind leg and step across. So if you didn't make him do too many steps, and in your brain, you said, I'm gonna reward you for answering my calf with that hind leg. Mm -hmm. Instead of whatever you imagine, that's what the horse perceives. Most people ask the horse to do the movement, and then they reward the movement. But if in your mind you say, I'm not rewarding the movement, I'm rewarding you for answering this calf with that leg, mm -hmm. he starts to connect in his brain the dots. And so we not only just get turn on the forehand, but later down the road, we can put our calves on and ask him to rotate his pelvis and come under and give us impulsion, which would create gait. Turn on the haunches, the same thing. Instead of rewarding him for doing the movement, reward him in a couple steps for a while for answering the aids. Now he has knowledge of how you're gonna collect him. We'll be right back with more of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome back to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Larry, go in and tell me about the, the, the breeds. Uh, I understand a lot of these breeds, they all claim to, to be the best riding or best comfort, you know? Oh, they yeah. The Missouri Fox Trotters, the Tennessee Walkers, the Proven's, and they all claim. The, yeah, the Rockies. Yeah, yeah, they all claim. I mean, what's the validity to this? Well, if you read their breed brochure, every one of them is the smoothest, most naturally gated horse in the world. Okay. But as soon as you buy one, you have to buy special bits, train them a special way, let their feet grow a different way. If in fact they are naturally gated, which means their genes tell them to gate, they're genetically bred to gate, technically I should just be able to put the horse in balance, get him relaxed, engage the hind end, and gait should just happen. Well, I could see your point, but being the devil's advocate, uh, sometimes they say, well, to enhance, you need these things. So are these just gimmicks or is this something that's really needed? Um, I, I think that they're gimmicks uh, because I've probably trained a thousand gated horses and I've never worked on gait. And I get the hardest, I get horses that eight trainers can't get the gait, so then they send it to us. We never work on gait. We just teach the horse what the horse needs to be comfortable in his own body and to carry out whatever the rider's aides ask him to carry out. And when we do that, we've never had a horse that didn't gait. It, it sounds like to me that some of the, 
the foundation that you mentioned earlier, if we teach that horse to go forward on cue and, and maintain that cue, we solve part of the problems, wouldn't you agree? Most of them. Yeah, most of them, you know. Then, then it's a, but that, doesn't that apply to any horse? Well, yeah, but it, it seems like gated horse people feel their horses need to be trained differently than trotting horses. I see. But they still balance the same way. The same things create relaxation. You still have to get them to go forward to be able to teach them to do anything. I mean, in order to make the horse emotionally stable, you have to teach him how to organize his feet and have balance. And but here again, what you just told me sounds like we, we need that on any horse. I mean, there's exactly. a size horse, a worm blood. Organize his feet. Where's his feet? He has to learn to find out where his feet is so he could use them. So Most of the gated horses that we get that have trouble gating, they don't even know where their feet are. Yeah. They, they've been driven into a big piece of equipment harshly yeah. because it's so important to gated people that yeah. their horse gates. Yeah. If you, if you love your horse, take care of his needs and gait will happen. But yeah. we work the other way around too often. We work on gait and hope that they will, that the other things will happen. When you work on foundation and gait happens, you, then you don't have to worry about spooking, buddy yeah. sow. All those things are taken care of. Well, yeah, because if they're spooky, and that's one of the things I've advocated <laughs> is if the horse is spooky, and you go to the show ring, how can they be smooth in their gait or their performance if they're edgy? Because any kind of edginess creates resistance. Yep, exactly. So, so that kind of goes back to your foundation that you keep bringing up. Yeah, and putting a foundation means that you're getting the resistances and braces out of the horse. Yeah. If you get and the, not putting it in it. And uh, not putting it in. Yeah. But when you teach gait first, you're often putting braces and resistance yeah. in. It, it seems to me, Larry, that we have more and more common. I, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of gated horses, and uh, and, and I, I'm quite honest, and I tell people, you know, uh, what I know about gated horses is uh, absolutely nothing, uh, other than I know if the horse is supple, you know, and and yielding to my hands when I pick up on the reins, and he's willing to receive it, and I put a leg on him, and. That means go forward, you know, um, you know, which is what we do with with every horse. And and you, and the horses that are do gate gate better. The horses that trot are are trotting more uh, more relaxed and more comfort instead of a big trot. They, mm -hmm. they 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 may even have a lengthening trot, but there's more suspension, so they're smoother. And so it, it sounds like just good training. It is, and I think that. Like if you have a fox trotter, you work on making your horse fox trot, and I have a walker, I would make him running walk, and then a rocky. I think when you train your horse to do what your breed brochure says, you often make your horse stiff. If you train your horse and put him in balance and let him offer what he can, he will give you the best gait he can do, and then you build on it week by week, month by month. The second you start trying to make the horse do the gait that you have in your mind, you're in trouble. Like... We'll be right back with more of Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Welcome back to Charles Wilhelm's Ultimate Foundation Horsemanship. Now he has knowledge of how you're gonna collect him. He runs through your hands, doesn't he? So he doesn't know how to go into the hand and soften. So if you just run him in, if you just ride him with two legs into your hand, he's gonna take his hind legs and run through your hands. He needs to learn to go into your giving hands, lift his back, rotate his pelvis, and come under, which that sounds complicated, but really it's not. Any horse that just has a foundation can figure these things out. Then he goes in, then you can ride him in a snaffle and get impulsion and get gait. Actually, you could put him in a halter and, and get gait. So teaching him turn on the forehand, turn on the haunches would be a good thing. I would do the groundwork that I watched you do on your uh, earlier show this yes, morning. Sir. That groundwork where you put the horse on the circle and moved his shoulders and moved his hips, all of the groundwork. But that, 
That in particular would help a gated horse because he would start to connect all the body parts yep. that he needs to get impulsion. This horse, he is so stiff in his neck because he's so out of balance from his inverted frame. And so one thing, th this is a fact. If he is locked up in the pole, you can't access his hind end with your legs. It's like in your groundwork, when you back, when they released in the pole, they rounded their back, tipped their pelvis. Yep. So when he inverts, he gets very rigid in his pole. We would need to get his head down a little bit. And you see, if I ask this horse to flex in the atlas, you see, he wants, he fights me. See how he fights me? All I'm asking him to do is give me a lateral do that, which he can't do. See how he fights it? So he's gonna fight the bridle because he's so rigid there. I, do, do you see that I that just got him to give a lateral bend? So if I could teach this horse to give me a lateral bend here, it will free up his hind end. If he's rigid here, you can't access the hind end. And of course, in the gated horse world, we need to be able to access the hind end to get impulsion to get gait, or we have to drive yeah. them into a bridle, and then we have to have a big bit to hold them back. So a lot of lateral work would help this horse. Like what you did on the ground, where you could like walk this horse in a bend and turn him on the forehand. Go ahead, just 